message from God's Word, here is Friends Fellowship Assembly Online. Where we reveal Christ, rebuild lives, and revive nations. Welcome. Buona sifiwe. Buona sifiwe tena. Before I introduce uh, my dear wife, I just want to say that uh, the praise and worship was wow. Was wow. Many years ago, I used to follow my sister. Wherever she is going to, to minister, I'll go there to, just to listen to her voice. And she was ministering to me, and it was like when she is taking the microphone, I was feeling something new in my heart. Every time. I remember there's a time that uh, I went to, I know she doesn't know, but I went to town, and uh, I follow her. She was in a church in town. I follow her in the afternoon. I had no fear. I was staying in Dandora. I trekked to the, to, to the church only to wait. And then when she was singing and ministering, it was something great to me. And it give, it, she was giving me hope that one day God will do something great. Just like the, uh, the husband has just said. God is doing some, God will do something great to you. Amen. It can be through the praise and worship. It can be through your friend. It can be through the, the sermon. So be expectant every day. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, my name is Peter Opio Misiani. I'm the husband to Patricia. Uh, I'm born again. I like God. I'm a minister too. And uh, I'll not say much about Patricia because I know many of you, you know about Patricia, but she's a dear servant of God. Amen. She likes God. And I love her most. I love her most. I love her. <laughs> Sometimes I tell her I feel jealousy. <laughs> I feel jealousy when, when she's not near me. So uh, I thank God for this opportunity. Welcome my sister, Patricia. One last thing before I go. One last thing before I go. Pastor, Pastor Clary and uh, Ben. Pastor Ben. Prepare for a big place because he is special. He is special. He is special. You achieve what you engine. Sansa kufikiria about it. Thank you. Let us pray. Rebo shekiti re ba 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 shekiti re. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we surrender your servant Patricia into your able hand. O oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. You had prepared this day, and you had said, this is the day that you have made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it, O oh Lord Father. As we are rejoicing in it, O oh Lord Father, we are going to rejoice as we are sharing from your word, O oh Lord Father. Father, any word, any speech, anything that will come out of Patricia's mouth, let it come from you, O oh Lord Father. And everybody that is here, O oh Lord Father, let us go home, O oh Lord Father, not the same that uh, not the same way that we came oh lord father oh lord father minister into our hearts oh lord father change us oh lord father you know each and everyone's need oh lord father you know each and everyone's spirit oh lord father oh lord father we thank you and we surrender into your hands in jesus mighty name we pray amen amen, amen. amen. I was glad when they said unto me, I was glad when they said unto me, 
I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Let us go, let us go, let us go. Let us go, let us go, let us go. Let us go, let us go, let us go. Let us go into the house of the Lord. There is power in the house, let us go. There is victory in the house, let us go. There is healing in the house, let us go. Let us go into the house. Let us go into the house of the Lord. Let us go, let us go, let us go. Let us go, let us go, let us go. Let us go, let us go, let us go. Let us go into the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. You are blessed this morning. Just have your seat. As and I will say it again. This is my motto. When you see me, remember this. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, this is the day that the Lord has made. You will rejoice and be glad in it. Tell yourself, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in this day. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I just want us to open our Bibles from the book of Judges chapter 6. As the servant of the Lord told me to minister today, I didn't have anything to tell you. I just had to tell you that the Lord loves you. <laughs> but as we were praising and worshiping, the Lord just put this in my spirit to tell you and me that revival begins with me. Amen. Just tell yourself, revival begins with me. Revival begins with me. Tell your neighbor, revival begins with you. Revival begins with us. So we'll open our Bibles from the book of Judges chapter 6. And I will read from which verse? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I will start from verse... I'll start from verse 7. When the Israelites cried out to the Lord because of the Midian, he sent them a prophet who said, This is what the Lord of Israel said. I brought you out of Egypt and out of the land of slavery. I, res I rescued you out of the land of Egyptians and delivered you from the hand of your oppressors. I drove them out before you and gave you their land. I say to you, I am the Lord your God. Do not, do not worship the gods of the Amorites in whose the land you live, but you have not listened. Verse 11, the angel of the Lord came and sat down under an oak in Oprah that belonged to Joash, the Hebizite, where his son Gideon was threshing wheat in a wine, spread, wine press to, to keep it from the Midianites. When the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. He said, Pardon me, my Lord, Gideon replied. But if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Where are all his wonders that our ancestors told us about? When they said, Did not the Lord bring us up of Egypt, but now the Lord has abandoned us and given us in the land of the Midianites. 14. Then the Lord returned to him and said, Go in the strength you have and save Israel, Israel out of Midian's hand. I am, am I not sending you? 15. Pardon me, my Lord, Gideon replied, but how can I save Israel? 
My clan is the weakest in Manasa. And I am the least in my family. 16. The Lord answered, I will be with you. And I will strike down all the Midianites, leaving none alive. 17. Gideon replied, if now I have found favor in your eyes, give me a sign that is really you talking to me. Please do not go away until I come back and bring my offering and set it before you. And the Lord said, I will wait until you return. 19. Gideon went inside, prepared a young goat and from an apra of flour, he made bread with yeast putting the meat in the basket, and it brought in a pot. He brought them out of, out of the offered, and offered them to him under an oak. The angel of the Lord said to him, take the meat and the unleavened bread, place them on this rock, and pour out the broth. And Gideon, said, and Gideon did so. 21. Then the angel of the Lord touched the meat and the unleavened bread with his tip of the staff that was in his hand. Fire fled from the rock, consuming the meat and the bread, and the angel of the Lord disappeared. 22. When Gideon realized that it was the angel of the Lord, he explained, Ah, severe and roll. I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. 23. But the Lord said to him, Peace. Do not be afraid. You are not going to die. 24. So Gideon built an altar of the Lord there and called it, the Lord is peace. To this day, it stands in Oprah's and the Abyssides. Shalom, shalom. Nothing missing, nothing broken. We serve the Lord of peace. And today I have good news for you. That, as I said, revival begins with me. The Bible says that the Midianites used to attack the Israelites every time they would harvest. And if you read before, the Bible says that they had done this for seven continuous years. Every time they would plant, when it's time for harvest, the Midianites would come and take away all the harvest, and they will remain with nothing. And as the Bible says that the Israelites cried to the Lord. And today, I just want to speak to someone today. I don't know for how long you've been crying to the Lord for a certain situation in your life. Because this, the Bible says that the Israelites, they used to plant planting time, you, you reap, you, you, you plow the ground, you put the seed, and then the seed grows, and when it's time for harvesting, the midnights come and take away the harvest. I don't know for how long you've been losing things in your life. Every time you go to work, from Monday to Monday, when you receive your salary, that's when your daughter is sick. That's when something has happened. You will not even enjoy your salary. I don't know for how long you've been in a ministry for years and years asking the Lord for the growth of the ministry. But every time the ministry wants to grow, that when something happens, choo -choo -choo -choo, I don't know what, and then the ministry breaks. And then you have to start again. I don't know for how long Maybe you've been pregnant for all the time. And when it's the time maybe you're expecting to have the baby, you miscarry the child. I don't know for how long, whatever thing you've been waiting on God for. And then when you want to receive the thing, you lose the expectation. And I believe that each and every one of us has experienced such kind of thing in our lives. But I have good news for you. Because the Bible says, verse 7, that when the Israelites cried out to the Lord because of the Midianites, he sent a prophet Amen. who said, this is the Lord, this is what the Lord of God, of God of Israel says. I brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. 
I rescued you from the hands of Egyptians and delivered you from the land of all your oppressors. I drove them out before you and gave you their land. I don't know. But the Lord is speaking to you and me today. That that's, that house that you are in right now, that ministry that you're having right now, that marriage that you are right now, that you are in right now, it is the Lord who placed you in that place. He said that he is the one who placed you in that place. And he had a reason why you are in this nation today. He had a reason why you are in this church today. He has a reason why you are in that family today. He has a reason why you are in that job today. He said that he is the one who has placed you in that place. He is the one who has given you those children. That maybe you have, you have struggled with your children. You have paid school fees for them. And then you are expecting something to happen to them. And then they just turn away from, from, from the thing that you want them to do. And then they, they just give you discouragement. But today we have good news from the Lord. He says he is the one who has given you that child. He is the one who has given you that ministry. He is the one that has given you that job. He is the one that has placed you in that situation right now. And he did not place you there to destroy you. Because he has declared in the book of Jeremiah 29, 11, that I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for evil. Plans to give you a future and a hope. It was not the will of God that the, Mid that the, that the, that the Mid Midians, that they should take away the, the harvest of the Israelites. So today, and the Bible says that 11, the angel of the Lord came and sat down under an oak. And this place is where this young man was seated. His name is Gideon. Today I want to speak to the Gideon of today. Amen. You and me are the Gideon of now. Amen. The Bible says that the angel of the Lord came down just because he wanted to speak to Gideon. And today, the angel of the Lord, the word of God has just come all the way from wherever it came. Through me, through the pastor, through anyone that is in this place today, that he can be able to minister to your situation. I was thinking, there, is a, there are people, I think they are Muslims. Every time they go, Mecca, just to go and give a sacrifice to their Lord. Can you imagine if God could have placed that kila mtu wapa, lazima tufike sijui somewhere, I don't know where, in the tower of somewhere, so that we can offer our praises and worship to him. How difficult could it be to us? But we serve a God and say, he is everywhere at every time. That when you just call upon him, he is there to hear us and answer us. We serve a God that we don't need to go to him, but he just comes to us. When we call, we don't go, he just comes and visits us in that situation. So the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, whereby he was threshing wheat in the wine spread. And I was trying to think, he was inside a wine press in a manisha. If you read history, Vizuri, is a place whereby Nikama inside a, a small cave wana wake up so that the wind when so, so that when the wind blows it doesn't take away the the harvest and Gideon was hiding imagine he is supposed to be watching over the wheat here konda a wine press he is in a different place why because he was even afraid that the middle and our the enemies will see him. And he was trying to take the wheat to put it under that place. That's how it was happening. When the wind blows, it takes away the chaff. So waksha on the chaff coming from those sides, it is harvest time. So they go and take away all the harvest. 
And now this gentleman was just hiding under this place so that the Midianites could not see that it is harvest time. In Africa, Mali, Mbaka, you cannot even tell what the Lord has done for you. You are so afraid. You are so depressed. You are, you are in a place that you are so pressed. You are not even free to worship the Lord. You are not even free to, to, to brag. That is the word I was looking for. To brag about your God. Gideonite was so afraid. He couldn't even appreciate the harvest that they were having. Because the, he was afraid of the enemy. And the Bible says, the Lord, the angel told him, Gideon, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. And today I just want to tell you that the Lord is with you, mighty man of God, mighty warrior, mighty worshiper, mighty intercessor, mighty prophet. You are mighty. Because the Lord has called you at this particular time. It doesn't matter what is happening around us right now. But there is revival in this nation. And for this revival to appear, it takes a man and a woman to stand in the gap. The Bible says, if you hear how this man was saying, Pardon me. That is verse 13. Gideon replied, but if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Where were all his where are all his wonders? That you have told us about. Because Gideon was an Israelite and the Bible that they were teaching the Israelites of the things that the Lord has done. I don't know if you have ever come to that situation. Whereby you are asking yourself, does really God exist? If God is the healer, why can't I see his healing in my life? If God is the provider, bonus on your provision. If God is the protector, why can't I feel the protection of God? And it took Gideon to stand in the gap and say, here I am, Lord. I am going to stand on behalf of the Israelites. And the Bible says that the Lord chose him and, 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 and the Lord turned to him and said, go in strength. You have, you have and save Israelites out of Midianites' hand. Imagine God and Amambia, go in the strength you have and save the Israelites out of Midianites' hand. And today I just want to tell you, you are the Gideon of your family. Amen. You are the Gideon of your marriage. Amen. You are the Gideon of your church. Amen. You are the Gideon of your ministry. Amen. You are the Gideon of your job. Amen. You are the Gideon of anything that is just called by your name. Amen. You are the Gideon. And the word of the Lord is telling you today that you have to go in strength that is in you and save the Israelites out of the Midianites' hand. Is it the premature death that is following your family? Is it a curse that is, that is, that is, that is, that is destroying our nation? We are the Gideons of this nation. And the Lord has chosen us today that we can go in strength and save our nation. Go in strength and save our ministries. Go in strength and save our children. Go in strength and save our marriages. Go in strength and save each and everything that is called by our name. Because the strength, because the strength is in you. The strength is not out of you, but it is in you. Because the Bible says that he who is in you is greater than the one that is in the world. You have the healing in you. You have the power in you. You have the anointing in you. You have the victory in you. You have the changes that's, that are, are being awaited for in you. And unless you take a position and say, here I am, Lord, I want to be used by you, nothing will change. 
as I told you last time, that nothing just happens. Unless someone takes a step of faith and says, no is no. Enough, it is enough. And I'm going to stand in the gap and see God moving in my life. And see God moving in my ministry. And see God moving in my marriage. And see God moving in my home. And see God moving in my village. And see God moving in my community. I want to see the move of God. And we will experience the power of God. It takes only one man to change a nation. It takes only one man to change a ministry. It takes one man to change a family. It takes one man to change a marriage. And when I mean man, I mean a man, a woman and a man. We are both man. I'm talking to the spirit man. And you can hear what Gideon is saying. But how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest. And I'm the least in my family. Gideon, because of what has been happening by the attacks for seven good years, he ended up losing his identity. He lost his identity. But I want to tell you this morning that you are a child of God. You are born of God. You are called of God. The Bible says, the book of 2 Peter 2.9 2, says that you are a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation. And Gideon lost his identity. And he was here discussing how he was the least. How his tribe how see you nini? How I cannot do this because I don't have this. I cannot serve you because I don't have finances. I cannot go to church because I don't have a car. I cannot do this because this is impossible. I cannot build a church because I don't have the finances. It takes a man and a woman to stand in faith. God has chosen you and me today to save this generation. To save our community. To save our home. And to save even ourselves. Because sometimes we put ourselves in bondages. In bondage that we need to come out of them. Praise the name of the Lord. And the Bible says that 16, the Lord answered, I will be with you. And you will strike down all the Midianites, leaving none alive. I feel good about this. The Lord is telling you and me today that you are not alone. In that marriage, you are not alone. In raising that child, you are not alone. Even if the child looks like to be so much rebellious, I want to tell you the good news that you are not alone. You are not alone in that job. You are not alone in that business. Even if it's not bearing fruits today, I just want to tell you that you are not alone in that business. You are not alone in that ministry. Because the Lord is with you. And he's telling us that he will, you will strike all the Midianites, leaving none alive. Praise the name of the Lord. It does not matter for how long they have been attacking the Israelites. But the Lord is restoring back what you have lost. Whatever the cacaoms and the locusts have eaten, the Lord is restoring them back today in the name of Jesus. Whatever the enemy has stolen in your health, the Lord is restoring it back. He is restoring it back. The 
because he's telling us that you will destroy all the myth, and you will leave none even a sign of what has happened will remain because he's a restorer Amen. he said that he's that he, that he's that he's he's, he's a restorer and he, he's a, he's a rewarder of them that seek him diligently i think it's hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 it is time that you have to stand in the gap for your family you have to stand the lord has just let me tell you you are not in that family by mistake you are not in this church by mistake you are not in this place by mistake but the lord wants to use you to change that situation he wants to use you to bring back what has been stolen He wants to bring back the man that he created in the first time. And he has, he has declared, he said, he has given the man power and authority and dominion. The only thing the Lord is requiring of you and me is to bring back the identity. To know who you are in Christ. You have to know who you are in Christ. Because Gideon here had lost his identity. And the Lord was restoring back the identity that Gideon had lost. And I have a, a like I can say, let me say it's a story to say. We used to hear, we had one preacher was telling us the story, so it's good for me to share. I think it's lining with this there was a time in uh, England yes I think it's in England yes that uh, the children there was a Bible school and the children they were going for trip trip for Bible tour Bible school tour and the uh, the leader, the dean, said that he wants to take them to a particular place where they can go and see something special. So he took all the school children, the, they were not school, okay, they were Bible school students, Kakwabasi, and then they left. As they went, they went in one old, old, old house where there was absolutely nothing in that house. But there were chairs, there were things that were still there, but it seems like it's a very old place. So they continued listening to what the Bible school teacher was telling them. This is the sitting room, this is the bedroom, this is the every place of, there was a, a man who helped in revival, I can't remember his name, who helped in revival at that particular time. So they went to visit his, his place. And during that time, they went and then they reached in, a, in the bedroom where the man was sleeping. And on the bed, just beside the bed, there were two mats that that man used to, to kneel down and, and pray. Even there were the print marks of the, of the knees, how that man was praying. And, as they, and then, they went, then they said that this is the place where this man was sleeping and this is the, the mat and these are the print marks of his knees. Then they said they left. On their way going, the teacher counted the, the students. He found one was missing. And he said, where is the other student? They looked for him everywhere. They couldn't find him. As they were going, and then they said, let us go back to the room. Then they went straight to the bedroom. When they went back, they found a young man, put his two knees exactly where the man was putting his own. And then the words that this man could say, here I am, Lord. Use me. 
Lord, if you did it, you can do it again. Lord, if you did it, you can do it again. And that man stood up and they went back to the, to the car. And surprisingly, the man was Billy Graham. If the Lord did it with Billy Graham, he can do it for you. He can do it for me. He can do it for us. He can do it for our children. He can do it for our nation. He can do it for anything that we ever need. The only thing he needs is a heart that says, here I am, Lord. Use me. And if you did it, you can do it again. If he healed, he can heal again. If he delivered, he can deliver the same. That's why Gideon was asking, what happened to us that we can just hear about this God that was doing miracle signs and wonders? It is time that we want to see God moving in our churches. We want to see God transforming lives. We want to see salvations. We want to see ministries changing. We want to see prayer, prayer, prayer meetings turning to revival meetings. We want to see church meetings turning to, to miracle signs and wonders. It is time we want to see God performing great miracle signs and wonders in our midst. In the name of Jesus Christ. We want to see God using our children. We want to see God using our youth. We want to see God using our nation. We want to see God using the women. We want to see God using the men. We want to see God using each and everything in this nation for his glory. If he did it, he will do it again. He says in his word that I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. He changes not. He changes not. He's still the deliverer. He's still the savior. He's still the redeemer. He's still the comforter. He's still the master. He's still the director. He reigns. He rules. He delivers. He saves. He redeems. He restores. He is God. Here I am, Lord. Use me. Here I am, Lord. Use me. You are the feet, the hands, the eyes, the mouth, the ears of God. Let him use you. Let him use you. Let him use you. You don't need to be a pastor to be used by God. You don't need to be a worshiper to be used by God. You can just be a cleaner and be used by the Lord. You don't need to be a manager to be used by the Lord. You don't need to be a doctor to be used by the Lord. You can just be a mamamboga and be used by the Lord. The only thing the Lord wants from you and me today. Here I am Lord. Use me. Do not look of what, of what happened, of what is happening, of how you look, of how you are. It does not matter. What matters is, here I am, Lord. Use me. The Lord wants to use this place for his glory. The Lord wants to use the children in this church for his glory. The Lord wants to use the men and women in this church for his glory. Amen. Let us surrender to him and tell him, here I am, Lord, use me. Here I am, Lord, use me. Here I am, Lord, use me. And just to finish, in the book of Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1, the Bible says, arise, shine. For your light has come. And the glory of the Lord is rising upon you. 
See, the darkness covers the earth and the thick darkness is over the people. But the Lord rises upon you. Why? And his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light and kings the brightness of the drown. Praise the name of the Lord. Arise, shine, for your light has come. Arising is coming from the state that you are very comfortable with and you arise to a state of standing. From your comfort zone to a zone whereby you are ready to be used by God. For your light. Why should you arise? Because your light has come. Your victory has come. Your deliverance has come. Whatever you've been waiting for has come. And the glory of the Lord rises upon you. The glory of God is rising upon you and me today. Where there is the glory of God, there is the presence of God. There are miracles, there are signs, there are wonders, there are healings, there are deliverance, there are victory, there is protection, there is provision, there is liberty, there is power, there is the anointing, there is everything that you need that is in the glory of God. Because when the glory of God used to appear during the times of, of Moses, I remember the same, the Israelites told even Moses, please, we don't want God to appear to us anymore. They could not even stand, they could shake because the glory of God shakes out everything that is not of him. And only the thing that God applies in your life is the one that stands in the glory of God. That is righteousness. That is holiness. That is purity. That is power. That is provision. That is protection. Arise, shine. Arise and do what? Shine. You have to shine for Christ. You have to shine for Christ. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. You have to shine for Christ. Shine in your family for Christ. Let God be known that you serve a mighty God. It will only be known when you say, here I am, Lord. Use me. Do you want to be used by the Lord? Do you want to be used by the Lord? Tell the Lord, here I am, Lord. Use me. It cannot just happen. You have to arise. First, you have to arise and say, enough is and shine. Why? For your light has come. You have got no excuse of not shining. Why? Because the Lord says your light has you have no excuse of not shining. Brethren, we have no excuse of not seeing miracles, signs and wonders in our ministries. In our communities, in our marriages, in our homes. Why? Because our light has come. It just takes a desire. Desire to see miracles. Desire to see signs. Desire to see one. Desire to see God moving. Desire to serve him. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his and all these things shall be 
arise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord rises upon you. And we say that, see the darkness covers the earth. There's corruption everywhere. There's fear everywhere. Whatever is being spoken of outside right now, it is fear. All nasikia tu ni cancer stage 4, sijui cancer stage 9, sijui nini stage, sijui nini. All these things, they're just to put fear in the kingdom of God. In a sense, antique darkness covers the people. But, but the Lord rises upon you. And his glory appears over you. We will not be transformed by the things of the world. And we will not be conformed to the things of the world, but we'll be trans we will be transformed. We will be a change. Wherever you go, a change comes. Jesus was walking. I remember there's, I just remember there's a woman who had an issue of blood for 12 good years. The Bible says that Jesus was walking in between the crowd. People were pulling him, were touching him, were doing everything to him. But Jesus had to stop somewhere and he said, someone touched me. Who is that someone that touched Jesus? And Jesus said that the power has come out of me. Why? Because that woman touched her with a desire. Everybody was just touching Jesus. Everybody. But they never received anything. Everybody is coming to church. But the only person that will go out transformed and changed will be with a desire in the heart. Brothers, don't just come to church. Just coming. As my husband has said, come expectant. Every day you come to the prayer meeting. You come to the worship service. You come just to clean the church. As you are stepping at that door, come expectant. Jesus stopped just because of this one woman. He was going on his way to, to, to heal. To heal the Jairus daughter. Jairus was a man of power. Was a man with a name. Was a man of integrity. But Jesus didn't look at that. He said someone has touched me. And power has come out of me. And the Bible said this woman came to Jesus trembling, trembling with fear. Yes, we Daughter. Your faith has made you well. If you check very well in the Bible as you study the Bible, it is only the first time that Jesus calls someone daughter. She had lost the identity. This woman has been bleeding and bleeding. She lost all her money. She lost all her wealth. She lost all her finances. And I believe this woman was a man with a name. She was a woman with a name. For you to, to, to be sick for 12 years, this woman had a name. Until the situation, the circumstance, the talks, the way people treated her, I am just nothing. But Christ came and told her, daughter, your faith has made you well. This woman was already healed. Why did Jesus stand? To restore back the identity she had lost. She could have gone back healed. But at her heart, she didn't have the identity back of who she was. But Christ was restoring back the identity of this woman. This morning, I just want to tell each and every one of us that Jesus is for us. Jesus is for us. God the Father is for us. God the Son is with us. God the Holy Spirit is in us. The only thing that he desires is a heart. Hallelujah. 
call upon me and I will answer. And today Christ wants us to know who we are in him. I don't know what you have been going through. I don't know what has been happening. But one thing I want to tell you. That you are the daughter of the most high God. And I will finish by telling you that you are a child of God. You are a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood. You are the daughter of the most high God. You are blessed by God. You are anointed by God. You are healed. You are delivered. You are protected. You are saved. You are changed. You are healed. You are loved by God. You are the child of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You are a priest in royal wood. You are a princess in the kingdom of God. You are called to, 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 to declare the good works of those that has called you. You are anointed by God. The anointing of God flows through your life. The power of God reigns in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, you, whatever you lay your hands on, it is blessed. In the name of Jesus Christ, your hands are blessed. Your feet are blessed. Your ministry is blessed. Your children are blessed. Your nation is blessed. Your home is blessed. Everything around you is blessed. You are a blessing in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name that is above all the other names. When you call upon him, he will answer. In the name of Jesus Christ, he is the king of kings. You are the child of the king of kings. You are the child of the Lord of lords. You are the child of the I am that I am. You are born of God. You are created by God. You are loved by God. You are chosen by God. You are anointed by God. You are being used by God. You are created to, this, to, to do great and mighty things. In the name of Jesus Christ, miracles will follow you. Signs and wonders will follow you. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are healed by God. You are lifted up by God. You are praised by God. You are loved by God. In the name of Jesus Christ, in Jesus mighty name, there is nothing too hard for God to do. There is nothing too hard for God to do. I am the Lord of all flesh, says the Lord. Is there anything too hard for me? Is there anything too hard for me? In the name of Jesus, Rima Sekete Rebosaya, Rikanta Rababasaya, Makuriba Shinta Rababasaya, in the name of Jesus Christ, Rakata Rababa Shinta Rababasaya, Makuriba Sinta Rababasaya, in the name of Jesus Christ, just rise up on your feet and tell the Lord this morning that I am your daughter, I am your son. With a message from God's word, here is Friends Fellowship Assembly online. Where we reveal Christ, rebuild lives, and revive nations. Welcome.